So, joining me right now is someone who's going to be a legend in the making. Oh. In the very soon future. Introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Grace Carter. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm not too bad. I'm good. I'm thinking we should go straight into it. So, your music is quite deep. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, a lot of people are probably going to start crying when they hear some of the tunes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not, it goes straight to the point. It's not kind of like glossed up in like little metaphors and stuff mm -hmm. all the time. No. Like obviously there's examples that we'll get into in a bit. But um, what made you want to go that route with your music? I, that's the only reason I ever started writing music to be honest, was to kind of get things off my chest and yeah. process emotions that I was feeling. I started writing songs when I was 13 and that was 100% because of my situation as a kid. And yeah. Not having a father and having a single parent and all of the complications that came with that. and. It was never a kind of a vehicle for me to be like famous or yeah. do this, like be here right now. It was kind of just a a tool that I found that helped me kind of understand why I felt the way that I felt. Okay. Like, what were you listening to when you were growing up in this kind of time? I was listening to like a lot of Nina Simone. So old classics. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. Then, but then like Lauren Hill, Destiny. I listen to what like everyone these days, like you hear anyone my age, and they're like, <laughs> Lauren Hill. Destiny's Child, but that's an India Ari. I was listening to all of those artists. Okay. Um, and then my mum just listened to like a whole load of different things and would play it in the car, so. So then how did that help to structure your music when it came to your time to make music? I don't, I think I'm definitely inspired by the songs that I grew up listening to, but I yeah. think when it came to my own music, it was more the fact that all the artists that I loved growing up were artists that sang about their problems and the things that they were going through. Yeah. And it was all quite, deep um so it was more kind of i felt confident enough in myself through listening to those people and hearing that they were so honest that i could be honest too so yeah. that's probably the way that they kind of influenced me okay and let's move to the present day yeah let's go mm -hmm. away from the past and uh, your brand new single is out right now yes uh, how's it feel to release it it's already got like what a thousand hundred thousand streams on day one yeah it was, well. it's, yeah <laughs> got close to a million now I don't even, I haven't checked. I try not to check because it freaks me out. But um, yeah, it's doing really, really, it was crazy. It was crazy. I, I wrote that song quite a long time ago now. And it's been a song that I've always wanted to put out. Yeah. Like I've, since I wrote it, I knew that I loved it. I played it to a few people and it was, they were like oh, way older than me and they all cried. And I was like, hey, cool, this, <laughs> this people, are connect, like, people are connecting to this. Yeah. This is like, it made me cry too. Um, so yeah, it's, why Her Not Me is just like a very important song to me. The meaning behind it and kind of how it helped me has been amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. Cause what made you feel like now was the time to put that specific song out? Cause I think that's me. Like that yeah. song is a hundred percent me. Kind of a lot of my songs are about the same, th not the same thing, but are influenced by the same thing, which is my childhood and growing up without a dad and growing up with a, just with my mum and the complicated, like how I felt about that as a kid. And, yeah. um, and kind of got to the point where I just wanted people to get to know me a bit more yeah. and kind of understand where I was coming from. Uh, I've released a lot of songs that kind of, I think a lot of people would assume they're about a relationship and yeah. to other people they 100% should be and can be. But for me, they're not. And Why Her Not Me is that song that kind of explains what I'm actually talking about in all of my music, which is my dad picking someone else over me. And that was, songwriting was my way of kind of processing that and understanding why. So it just kind of felt right. Yeah, see it's kind of like deeper when you break it down like yeah, that. Yeah, it's really deep. You yeah. said deep before, but it just got a whole lot deeper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just like, <laughs> listening to that, I'm just thinking, oh my days, There's like, I need to go back and listen to the song and just get a whole new perspective in there. Yeah, it is, it is, it's really, it's really deep but I also kind of it helped me a lot and I feel a lot better having written that song and yeah. as much as it's about that like in other situations I've been in in my life I can relate it to as well and my friends that maybe haven't been through the same thing or people that have heard it that maybe haven't been through the same thing can relate it to a relationship a yeah. friendship it's kind of like one of those songs that yeah. I hope people can kind of put their lives onto definitely because I feel like it opens up a window for everyone to like if I've read like some of the comments mm. and people are like yeah I can relate to that and it's like yeah, yeah my boyfriend left me yeah. like, now listen to that I was yeah. like no one's talking about yeah. but it all makes sense in that, like, and it's good because like I feel like probably you probably be able to answer this question better than I can mm. I'm not an artist but yeah. like your song writing has it helped you like learn more about yourself a million yeah. percent before I started writing songs I was a very complex person <laughs> I was a very stressed and like frustrated I was a teenager as well but 
I was just a very frustrated person. So songwriting kind of allowed me to understand myself and understand why I felt the things that I felt. Um, and in turn with that, it's helped me become a way happier, like smiley person. So yeah. So is there going to be a change of uh, sounds as you're more smiley now? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm right. Yeah, I think when I first started writing songs, it was literally just to get things off my chest and I always will be. But yeah, my like the songs that I'm writing now are different to the songs that I first started writing. Like it's kind of yeah, yeah. sonically, like I'm experimenting a lot more. But it's always going to be about something that I've been through, and it's usually something sad. <laughs> <laughs> well, happy times, sad times. It all makes yeah, music, isn't it? Exactly. I hope so. One thing we got to talk about as well is kind of the imagery that you use. So mm-hmm. Let's talk about the cigarette. Yeah. That kind of metaphor into what you're trying to explain yeah. about again choosing something and why that's more significant. Mm-hmm. Like, what made you think of that as an example to use? Because I was, I was kind of, when I was listening to the song, I was kind of taken away by that. Yeah. I was like, I didn't really think of ever, anyone ever really using a cigarette in that way. As a metaphor, yeah. yeah. I think, because it was kind of an actual object in the situation. Yeah, yeah. And I would always kind of look and be like, why, why are you telling me that you're craving this thing that is so in, insignificant? Yeah. It's a, it's a material, like it's so materialistic. It's like, doesn't really mean anything. Yeah. And then when it comes to me, you don't really care. Like yeah. you're not, you're not craving me like you're craving that cigarette right now. And it kind of, I just said that sentence when I was working with this guy Justin, and I, it was just like, yeah, that's what, that literally like sums up how I'm feeling in mm. this way. That's like not completely direct, but like the metaphor of the cigarette just made it. It just made sense in my head, and I'm yeah. so glad that when the song was written and finished, that it it continues to make sense and people are relating to it because it could have gone in a whole yeah, other yeah. direction. I mean, it definitely, it's like the music that you make is very relatable and I guess when you're on your travels and you're on the road as well yeah. you've been quite busy this year with that yeah like, <laughs> very yeah like some of the artists you were like Dua Lipa mm-hmm. then you had Rag and Bone Man yeah then it was I always I just H-A-I-M is it Haim? Haim Haim I think well they say Haim there's Haim then because it's their surname yeah, so yeah, I don't yeah. even know but yeah I call them Haim and yeah Mabel it, yeah it's been pretty mental we did our first show ever show last September so it's not even been a year yeah and I released my first song Silence last May so it's moved pretty quickly and been pretty mental but it's yeah it's been amazing I love performing I love touring I love meeting new people I love seeing new places so yeah it's been pretty intense so then with that what you're saying how does that kind of shape when you go back to the studio Mm -hmm. because obviously when you're doing stuff like again best of all and the great escape that's a different experience than to do shows like that so how do you kind of incorporate all of that and then to making or just recording music well i think being on those tours and performing in those places i've i've been very lucky to see that people are connecting to what i'm i'm doing and singing and singing and so it kind of just reminds me that like I'm doing something right kind of thing or like I must or not even like in a massive way but like yeah, just yeah. stick to what I do and I don't ever question it I just kind yeah. of go back and I'm like this happened can we write about it because I just know that I've done shows and there've been like young girls and they're like young way younger than me 14 like crying over a song that I wrote about something that probably they can't they don't know yeah, about yeah. and it's like that to me is so powerful and that's what I want to achieve I don't want to make people sad but I want to make them feel like empowered it's sad in a good way though yeah it's kind of like empowering I hope well that's like I don't want to depress with, people yeah run with that and you'll be fine <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like um, yeah so then what's one of the maddest things you've seen while you've been on your travel so far when it comes to performing we went to um, we went to Kosovo a few weeks ago with um, Dua Lipa Dua, Dua Lipa Dua's dad yeah. has this festival with Dua and she kind of really nicely asked me to play and we went out there and it was one stage and there was 12,000 people Matt. and I sang Silhouette actually and for the first time like I never ask anyone to do anything so I'm like if I ask them to clap or do anything they're like not going to do it it's going to be so mortifying but they were so on my side. Like when I walked out, they just like all of like twelve thousand people just cheered me, and I was like, "Wow!" And then I was just like, "Can you put your torches up on your phones?" And the whole audience just put their phone torches up, and I just like, I don't know. That was a moment for me. I felt very emotional because I just kind of the song was about feeling alone, but in that moment, it was like You're I felt so surrounded by like so many people, and I yeah. felt that like we all felt kind of like we were together <laughs> in the moment. Yeah. And it, yeah, it was really. It was really powerful. So then going from that experience, 12,000 people, all kind of like, you know, listening to everything you're saying yeah. and vibing with you. How are you going to 
effect? How's that going to affect your tour that you start in October? I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to do me. <laughs> I'm just going to do me. Yeah, I'm so excited for it. I yeah. can't wait. I've toured with so many people now and it's been amazing and I love them all. Um, but doing your own tour, like, I don't think there's anything like that. Yeah, because you, you're the centre of attention. This <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? yeah. Like, and I'm an only child, so I do love that. <laughs> um, no. Yeah, I guess so. But also... Just the fact that people have connected to my music enough to buy a ticket to come and see me is like enough. Like I'm, that just makes me very happy. And we've got Aeris Rove's coming on the tour with us, which I think he's great. Really like his music and I love his voice. So yeah, I think it's gonna be, it's gonna be really good. I mean, I'm gonna try and slide Come through. down yeah. and please do come. It's gonna be, yeah, we're doing Village Underground on the 29th of October. There you go, people. Yeah, there you go. Please <laughs> come, come on down, um, which, it's going to be an amazing show. Yeah, it's like a thousand people. Yeah, well, it's yeah. a lot of people and I'm pretty excitedly nervous about it. We did Hoxton Bar and Kitchen like a couple months ago and that was so overwhelming. So I yeah. just feel like this is going to be like a whole other sort of overwhelming. The thing is, you've done other crowds in other places. Like London crowds, sometimes they can be a bit hostile. Yeah. But you're going to be singing about stuff that's going to know yeah. audience anyway. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, London crowds are an interesting crowd, but I kind of love it. So you have to win them over. That is true. So we know, obviously, you're in the travels as well. Yeah. Like, what's one thing that you might have picked up from some of the people that you've traveled with? Like I a tip for yourself that you've kind of learned? Everyone that I've traveled with, like they'll be having the worst day, but they'll just get on with it. They'll put a smile on their face and they'll just get on with it. And I think that's probably what I've learned from all of them. It's just like, you're blessed to be in the situation you're in. So kind of just get on with it and have fun and make the most of it. Yeah, yeah. kind of spiritual though. Yeah, that was really deep. I don't know why that got so deep. I think sorry. deep is the tone of the interview yeah. right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah. But um, So you got, like Saving Grace EP came out June right yes yeah so it came out june so we're kind of getting towards the end of the year into the mm -hmm. new year you got this single is there a project or anything coming yeah i've been working on a, a longer project for a good while now so hopefully next year people will get to hear that and see that there you go 2019 yes oh my god it sounds mad 2019 yeah let's not get to yeah, that. yeah. Really <laughs> all right well that was grace car and uh, I'm gonna let her sign up. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Where can the people find you? You can find me on Instagram. Why Instagram first? That's so disgusting. <laughs> um, YouTube. You can find me Spotify, Apple Music, Instagram, which is Grace Carter Music, and Twitter, which is it's Grace Carter. Go with Instagram first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>